everyone time writer here i hope everybody had a great weekend and all you christians out there had a great easter i'm always struggling as a photographer and a restorer of old toys struggling to see things through the eye and mind of a child i grew up poor so when i see this through my child's eye i see a little boy who really wanted a dinky 150 but the folks could only afford the matchbox Undeterred, as children often are, he did the next best thing. That tidbit of my psyche now revealed, this is a 44B Rolls-Royce Phantom 5. Lesney produced this from 1964 to 1966. Generally, some form of mauve. They can also be found in a silvery gray. Fred the paint guy was out of red that week. Early versions have gray wheels and those are the ones to keep. I did this one before, and I gave it to Jim Silva when he won my 24C Rolls Royce in an eBay auction. I'd figured I'd give that paint another lash on this restoration, so stick around. So it was a pretty good casting, opening trunk, held on with one post and one tab. Things probably you know, 55 years old. Think about it. You get that post apart. It was really simple to take apart. Um, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, metal castings and metal chassis, and I don't know, I think it just makes it easier. Has a suspension piece that was actually pretty straight. An interior... Not too dirty. Still in good shape, too, the interior. Then it had one of those, it's like a little thing that they split to hold the windshield in. Just got the one post that I have to get ready. Tap it out. And I gotta put it back together sometime, right? Always seem to wind up with a little bit of a mushroom on there even though it comes out of the hole okay. Sometimes they don't like going back into the hole so well. So I grind it off smooth, make sure that I can get the chassis back on before I go too far with it. And I've learned a thing or two about losing stuff in the ooze. Hence the safety pin. We're going to give this thing a shake for luck. And once we uh, get it out of the ooze, got to get it ready for paint. You know, they actually only made 832 of these. Uh, it was really a car that you really didn't drive, you were more driven in. You know, the royal family had a couple of them. And they actually, I probably said this the first time I did this too, the car had an extra low gear so people could walk next to it. Uh, specifically for profe uh, processions. I, I did red primer partly because I wanted to try it out. I'm trying to expand my primers a little bit and partly because the car was going to be mauve and I thought that um, red primer would be a good base for it. So uh, the paint I, I made like I did before by mixing about equal portions of uh, Tamiya silver and Tamiya gold and then tinting it just a little with just a little bit of a red. Not much, like a couple, three drops. It goes a long way. It's not like black. When you put black in something with Tamiya, man, it really shoves it to the dark side fast. So 
Uh, it's easy to get this a little too red. The governor of Hong Kong had one of these, and when the British handed Hong Kong back over to the Chinese, uh, the Navy, Royal Navy took it, took the Rolls Royce with them. That was one of the things they grabbed. Of course, somebody tried to make these look like white walls. It was a nice attempt, but uh, they're going to have to come off. I actually, what I wound up doing is uh, I have kind of a junkyard of stuff, and I wound up taking some wheels out of that. These didn't, they didn't clean up so well. I don't know what kind of paint they used on them, but it was very unforgiving. Elton John had a pink one. Elvis had a blue one that he had to paint light silver because his mother's chickens kept pecking at the original paint. I threw those wheels in some brake fluid to see if I get the paint off and now I'm going to strip the base. Usually when I paint these I just use uh, a Rust-Oleum product that's primer and paint in the same. Just want them all the same color, they're going to be facing down, right? And of course, everybody knows John Lennon, John Lennon owned one of these. His had a, a floating record player in the back so that when they went over bumps, then the record wouldn't skip. Eventually, it had a tape deck, but... As always, I like to start in the middle and work my way out. I've always found that it's easier push the paint where I want it than to try to pull it. So anyway, all in all, I thought uh, this turned out pretty good. Unfortunately, as those of you who watch the bench know, uh, there was a little chip in the trunk and I don't even know how it got there. But uh, I had to throw it back in the stripper and start all over again now I won't bar you with you know more of me brushing and painting I'll just move on to the cleaning of the plastic parts which of course I don't have on the screen right now ah oh, there's a there's a plastic part uh, there's really only three plastic parts and like I said the suspension piece was uh, in pretty good shape which is really unusual. Now the glass in the back had a crack in it. And sometimes what I'll do here, like I'm, well, what I'll do is what I'm doing here. And that's Tammy a thin, it's a plastic cement and it's super thin. And I just don't want the, the crack to spread. That's what I'm trying to prevent. Um, this didn't work out so well as you'll see in the final reveal, but, uh, I wasn't about to source a new windshield, but usually if I polish it up and uh, dip it in, uh, clean, well, clean it up too, and then uh, dip it in some gauzy, that's usually good enough. This stuff is, it's good, it's really thick, you know, compared to the pledge, so you do have to kind of be careful. You have to wick it pretty good and let it drip pretty good. Get all that extra off of there. Eventually, I did get around to putting the whole thing back together. You can see that little drop in there. What that is, is that uh, UV resin. And I use that to put the window in. It just takes a few seconds. And the beauty is, is if I ever want to get it out, it's not going to break. Put the little trunk in there. That was actually held in by the interior. So. Put my button screw in it. That's a magnet, because for some reason, whoever made these screwdrivers didn't magnetize them. Passing my understanding. And now we go back to where we started. 
And while there may be times when I will honor the wishes of the child and paint it the way I find it, this isn't one of them. So, let's take a look at where I wound up. The Matchbox, number 44B, Rolls-Royce, Phantom 5. There will be an episode of The Bench after the video for those of you that like that kind of thing. Thumb up, thumb down, don't matter to me. Please keep your comments respectful. This is Time Rider, and I'll leave the light on for you. Thanks for hanging around for this edition of The Bench. Later this week, I'm going to be releasing the last of my Red Line re-releases, The Yellow Baron. I don't know what Mattel was thinking of. You know, and I like me a silver charger, but this little charger's kind of got a long way to go before it'll qualify to be a wee little car. I told you everybody that I was going to start doing a little bit more large scale. Uh, I just took this thing out of the box. I'm not going to do it next or anything, but I was so excited about it because uh, I got it for a really good price. So I'll throw that into the mix sometime later on. Sooner rather than later, I hope. I mean, anybody who knows me knows what a bow tie guy I am. One of my subscribers, Tom Hackhouse, sent me six of this 1964 Chevy Impala. I emailed Tom and told him I wasn't sure I was going to do with six of these uh, short of sponsoring a build. He replied that such was the idea. So here's what I need. I need five builders. I'd prefer U uh, U.S. located builders, no custom farms here, and much more reasonable shipping. I'd prefer people who have built with the mice before. Uh, I don't know, call it a thank you, something, whatever. Um, now, these things have these god-awful white wheels, so know that a wheel swap will probably be required. I'm thinking Memorial Day, you know, baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. Maybe give it a patriotic theme. Anyway, let me know. Last, I'm working on my Ranchero for the Three Blind Mice build on the 25th. I think I'll have it done by then. At least I hope I have it done by then. And, uh... That's about all I got for you. I should have another uh, video coming out here in a couple of days. I hope everybody's doing well in spite of the fact that we're all sitting on our ass. Everybody be good. Comment below. Please be respectful. And I'll see you at the next build.